Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is from the Gospel lesson, which I just read from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 51. We pray, open our eyes, Lord, that we might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I have here a, a little model here. Uh, Danielle, do you mind coming up so they can see it better? Uh, of Noah's Ark. Now, obviously, this is uh, just for fun. It's not the, the real, uh, how the real Ark looked, but uh, it was much longer than this. But it just is a great reminder of Noah's Ark for us because it, it was an amazing event to think that God would be so upset with the world that he would destroy everyone except for Noah's family by this flood. And thank God he saved all those animals as well. But we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Noah because Noah found favor with God. And that is beautiful because without Noah, we would not be here. God would have been upset with everyone. That would have been the end of humankind. But Noah found favor with God, the Bible said. Noah was a faithful servant of the Lord, creating that ark. And this was before rain had come upon the earth. So to make an ark on the land, you know, that was crazy, especially to make one so big when Noah had such a small family. It was crazy to those who lived at that day. They would have thought, why in the world is he doing that? They probably made fun of him. They probably harassed him. But Noah was faithful to his Lord, and he kept on building that ark. And if not, we wouldn't be here today. Thank God for faithful and wise Noah, a faithful servant of the Lord. In our text for today, we see that God calls us to be faithful and wise servants of the Lord as well. What all does that mean? We will take a look at that today as we examine our text from Matthew 24, beginning at verse 36. Jesus is talking about the end of the world when he returns. And he says, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the, were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. And so life was just continuing on in Noah's day, and then all of a sudden this flood came. But they had a warning through Noah as he was building this ark. They had all this time to repent of their sin, to ask Noah, what is going on here to learn from Noah the truth and to be saved? So God gave them a witness through Noah. Unfortunately, however, they didn't listen. And so suddenly the end came for them. And Jesus is saying in the same way, people will go about their daily lives, everything as if, Everything was just fine, as if everything was just normal. And then suddenly, Jesus will return. The end of the world will occur. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. It is going to happen, just as the flood did occur on the earth. As a matter of fact, you can see the geological evidence for the flood. For example, you can see huge, gigantic boulders that have been moved in the Grand Canyon, an area where there wouldn't be any water, but they've been moved from one place to another. What could have moved these huge boulders? Only a massive amount of water, which would occur with a worldwide flood, which, as it was receding, or as it was coming forward, either way, there would be enough strength to move these massive boulders. But if you want to know more about that, the scientific evidence for the flood, uh, just talk to me. I can get you, get you some resources, because it is fascinating that even on this planet, there is geological evidence for the flood, showing us that the flood did occur, that the Bible is true, and therefore Jesus is coming back as he said he would. Jesus goes on to describe the end in verse 40 of Matthew 24. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. 
But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you all also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He's coming when we don't expect him. We don't know when he's coming. Many people have tried to guess the date, and of course they were all wrong. So we don't want to go about guessing the date. The important thing is that what we want to do is we want to be ready for his return. So the question is, how are you ready? Well, the obvious answer is, you're ready when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you've been baptized. As Mark 16 says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And you have been baptized into Christ. You believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are ready for his coming again. You are ready for your death, which obviously could come first. Maybe Jesus will come back, but maybe he, in our lifetime. On the other hand, maybe he won't. But either way, we know that we're going to die or he's going to come back. So we want to be ready for that moment. And we are ready as we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The glorious gospel that though we are sinners, though so many times we are not faithful to our Lord and to his word, though we are sinners, still Jesus Christ died on the cross for sinners. He rose again from the dead so that now everyone who believes in Jesus has forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Praise God for the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which makes us ready for the return of Jesus Christ, which makes us ready for our death, because we believe in our Savior's wonderful gift of eternal salvation. So we are ready, and yet there's still work to do, for he gave us a job to do while we're waiting. He said in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples. So we're ready, but we want others to be ready as well. So that's why we spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why we let others know about Jesus Christ. That's why, for example, we have this Christmas tree. As they drive by, they can see these candles and this Christmas tree, reminding them of the fact that Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. We need to be reminding people of this because it is being forgotten. In these days of happy holidays, People are forgetting about Merry Christmas. That's why I'm always saying Merry Christmas at this time of year rather than Happy Holidays because we want to remind people what this season is all about. It's about Christ, the birth of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, because we are ready, but we want others to be ready as well. Jesus goes on in verse 45 of our text, Who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom his master has set over his household, to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. God wants us to be faithful, faithful servants. Faithful, faithful to the word of God, the Bible. Faithful to God. That we don't give up our faith, though we don't see God Though we don't see with our eyes his coming back, we believe that God is there. We believe Jesus is coming back. We live lives full of faith, trusting the promises of God that are found in the Holy Bible, the Holy Word of God. May God help us to be faithful people, not giving up on our faith, but ever faithful, ever holding on to the faith that has been given to us through God's Holy Word. We also want to be wise servants, wise. And what gives us wisdom, wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from the Bible. We learn wisdom from the Word of God. Because otherwise there is the wisdom of the world. The Bible talks about the wisdom of the world. In other words, the world comes up with all these ideas. But many of them are wrong. We want to go to the Bible to have the wisdom that comes from God to learn the truths of God's holy word that we might live our lives according to the word of God and not just live like the rest of the world. Look at Noah's day. The wisdom of the world would say, Noah, you're crazy to build an ark. Why are you spending all that effort and time on that? That was the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom of God said, listen to what God says to you. And so Noah did what God asked him to do. He built that ark. 
And we see that Noah made the right choice. He was a wise servant. He listened to the voice of the Lord. And God speaks to us today through his holy word, the Bible. May we listen to God's holy word, the Bible, that we might be wise servants. We are servants. Servants serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thankful for what he's done for us on the cross. We serve our amazing Lord. We're not here to serve ourselves, but we're servants of our Master, Jesus Christ. And we find joy in serving the Master. Joy in serving Him as you're doing tonight, giving Him praise, listening to His Word, praying to Him. You serve Him as you come to the church, as you serve in the church. We also serve the Lord as we serve others on this planet. For example, in our jobs, we serve others and help others. For, as our text says, who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? So these servants are giving food to the fellow servants at the proper time. In the same way, we are serving others, maybe as we serve in our jobs, maybe as we serve our families, maybe as we serve our neighbors, whatever it might be, volunteering, serving in the church. In all these ways, we're thinking about others. We're servants. We're not just thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about others. May God help us to be faithful and wise servants. As Jesus says, blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will sit him over all his possessions. So keep serving the Lord. We don't know when he's coming back, but he is coming back. We are ready because we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior. We want others to be ready as well. So we faithfully serve our master and we serve one another, helping out in any way we can. One simple way we can help others out is simply inviting them to church as we have these great church services coming up, this great season, the wonderful Christmas carols we'll be singing. Another way you can care about others is invite them to hear our children's choir. We're going to be singing at the restaurants here in town. So as you leave today, just before you go out the door on the right, there's a table there, and we have these Christmas and song sheets. Take some of those. Maybe you could put them up at a business or invite your neighbors or others at work. But we're going to be singing at these three restaurants. We haven't had a lot of time to practice, so don't expect some great choir, but what we do have is a great message. We're singing these great Christmas carols, these great songs. We have a great message to share the kids that we'll be singing. That's just one way that we can show fellow, show our fellow servants that we care about them and that God cares about them. Helping them to understand that, indeed, Jesus is the reason for the season. So may God help us then to spread that news, that Jesus is the reason for the season. And may God help us to be faithful and wise servants, as he has said. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant, whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.